Hey folks, and welcome to Typology, the show in which we explore the mystery of the human personality through the lens of the Enneagram. I'm Anthony Skinner, producer of the show, and we're happy to have you here. Hey, we've got another really great one for you today. It's part two of our two-part podcast with Carrie Newhoff. Today, through the lens of the Enneagram, we're covering topics like burnout, anxiety, technology, so you're really going to enjoy part two of this two-part episode. If you haven't heard part one, you'll want to go back and listen to that too because Carrie has so much to offer. So without any further ado, let's get on with it and pick up the conversation with Carrie Newhoff and your host, Ian Cron. Going on, let's let's talk about burnout for a second. Oh, I'll tell you, I, you know, I thought before I burned out, the rules just don't apply to me. And then you realize, oh, they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Apparently, apparently I'm human. Right. And, and that was my story all through my thirties. It was as our church grew and it grew quite explosively. It was just more people equals more hours. It was really, really difficult. And you know, Ian, what's really fascinating for me is now for 13 years, by the grace of God, I've stayed out of burnout, but it is such a... I would say daily awareness. Like this is this has mm. become who I am. And I write a little bit about it and didn't see it coming. It'll be a big chunk of my next book, which doesn't have a title yet. It comes out uh, fall of 2020, where I talk about, and I teach it in the High Impact Leader course. But basically every day I think about how much sleep am I getting? Am I eating properly? Am I exercising? Am I, uh, you know, am I even flights? I was talking yesterday with one of my, team and we're booking flights for an upcoming speaking engagement. And I've got a new uh, person on the team and they were going to fly me out at such and such a time. And one of my longer time team members is like, he can't do a flight that late, you know, uh, and, and there are limits. Mm -hmm. And I think as an eight prior to burnout, I didn't think I had any limits. And now on the other side, I'm like, oh, if I respect those, I get a much better run out of this and I feel a lot better and I'm, I'm much healthier and so I would say, and, and of course, ironically in all that is I've discovered the more I respect and understand my limits, the more I'm actually capable of. Oh, I mean, completely. Threes can hit burnout in a big way for all the obvious reasons, right? They'll mm. just, because they're just, mm. they're just chronic doers. They just can't stop doing, right? Yeah. Everything is about tasks and productivity and efficiencies. Uh, ones for sure can burn themselves out because there's always something to perfect. The world is so full of errors. Uh, they have so much trouble relaxing. That's a major feature for ones. Um, uh, twos will burn mm. out because you know, there's plenty of needs out there that, to meet, you know, uh, and- Help her, help her, Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that can happen in a heartbeat. I think the emptiness of success, I think, again, of threes, that, that would be a, a, an issue mm -hmm. for threes. But, you know, I, th I think that's a universal, too, that, you know, whatever success means, it may be financial, it may be reputation, it may be whatever, uh, you know, we, we all are subject to that because usually whatever the um, focus of our pursuit is, right, our, uh, whatever it is we're trying to achieve, it's mm. always a lesser story than a spiritual story, mm. right? Yeah, and I think threes and eights would be particularly susceptible to emptiness because so much, you know, eights, it's a lust for power, for influence, for whatever. And then you're like, well, it's not enough. It's not enough. More is the best answer. And every time you hit a new level, you're like, mm, it's got to be more than this. And I wonder if, if for a three, they're like, I've worked for all of this and this is what it feels like. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you're the expert. <laughs> I think that's true of sevens too, right? Mm. Because the, because their deadly sin or their passion is gluttony. So there's never enough. All right. There's never enough. Adrenaline addicts, the whole deal, oh, right? Yeah. Like I just, I just need more. Right. But that disillusionment mm. can sink in, right? Which is, this is, this is not given me everything I, I had hoped for. Um, I agree with you, by the way, on disconnection. Did you hear about in England now they now have a minister of loneliness in the government? I do. Yeah, I did hear about that. They were, I don't think that made it into the book. It came out be, just before it was published. But yeah, they have a minister not of loneliness, but for loneliness because right. they Thank see you. it as an epidemic. Yes. And I think if, I mean, if memory serves me correct, 
uh, there's something like 200,000 people who will not, in England or the UK, who will not have contact with another human being for a 30-day window. What? Oh. It's like, are you kidding me? Oh, it's, my it's, goodness. It's, it's, it's insane when you look at it. Wow. And so here we are. And the other thing, there was another study that came out last year, Ian. Uh, it was a big one. It was done by, I think, an insurance company of 2,000 Americans. And they broke down... Uh, feelings of isolation and loneliness by demographic. Mm. And what I would have expected is for the elder generation, people 70 plus, that that would be quite high. Their kids have moved away. They don't see their grandkids as much. Some of their friends have died. Um, you know, they're, they're not in the most social prime area of their life. But what was really surprising in the study is they reported the greatest sense of connection and well-being and then as it went down from boomers to Gen X to millennials to Gen Z, mm -hmm. uh, it got worse and worse and worse mm -hmm. to the point where Gen Z, which is essentially teenagers and college students, uh, per, uh, reported the most profound sense of loneliness and isolation. And they, wow. conversely, are the most connected. 95% mm. of teenagers are on YouTube every day. So they are the most hyper-connected generation that are now self-reporting the deepest feelings of loneliness. Yes. And I would add to that anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I've never seen more folks into their 20s even, you know, they there is this permeating anxiety. I think part of that is, you know, the amount of material that they're exposed to on a regular basis that would create anxiety. And they're just, you know, my kids struggle with anxiety in a way mm. that I did not, yeah. you know, and I just think, so much of that is the lack of connection, which gives you a sense of safety and security, and also just the amount of exposure they have to material online that, you know, we just didn't have at their age. You know, we just didn't have it. I'm doing a bit of research into that right now uh, for, for next year's project, next year's book. And uh, one of the things I'm learning, like Cal Newport, I think it's Cal Newport, who said that the first d truly smartphone native year. So, you know, when you went into middle school, you had a smartphone, which is only about a decade ago, um, that when that group entered college, because, you know, university colleges, they've had data on anxiety for decades, right? And it's always X percent. I'm going to pick a percentage out of the air. 4% of all incoming students will struggle with anxiety. The first year that the digital natives got to college, it went through the roof. Mm. Not just at one college, but every college. Wow. And now as they're looking back, we got several years of data on that. They're linking it 100% to smartphone addictions. Wow. And coming of age where your entire life, you, you know, your, your functional life, not when you were four, but from the time you were 11 or 12 years old, was spent on technology, uh, a direct connection between the use of technology and anxiety, which is why I think you see more and more people like Cal Newport's new book is called Digital Minimalism. Uh, you see people now buying dumb phones and uh, even Apple has come out with, you know, screen limits and do not disturb features. And I find for myself, you know, I'm super hyper connected. I'm a podcaster, blogger, author, conference speaker, pastor, all those things. Uh, but my phone's on perpetual do not disturb. And so I miss almost all my phone calls because unless it's scheduled, then I'll take it off. Do not disturb. But, you know, I, I like I don't need to know right now. We've lived for thousands of years without needing to know everything right this moment. And I think we have way more information than God ever created us to deal with. Mm. You know, think about the knowledge of the tree of good and evil in Genesis 3. This is fascinating me right now. But what was our sin? The, the first sin was we bit into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, figuratively or metaphorically, whatever. Uh, and all of a sudden, now, now the scripture says that we gained insight and we gained knowledge, but what we didn't gain with that was power. Mm -hmm. Because God has perfect knowledge and perfect power. He also has perfect wisdom. We simply gained the knowledge mm. and now we don't know what to do with it. Wow. And technology has just amplified that to the point where we have all this information from world news. What am I supposed to do about the landslide that killed 300 people? Right. What can I do about Notre Dame burning right. down? What, what am I supposed to do uh, about the plane that blew up? What am I like? I don't know what to do with that. And a hundred years ago, our grandparents didn't have to deal with that kind of onslaught of information. Plus, you know, I counted up as I was getting ready to write this new book. Uh, I have 11 inboxes. Wow. Like, 
was any human being supposed to have 11 inboxes? I don't think so. But Instagram added an inbox. I have two Facebook accounts. They both have inboxes. I have private and public emails. Uh, LinkedIn has an inbox. I mean, you, you, Twitter has an inbox. You look at that and now everywhere you go and every, and get this, we used to go to work. Now work goes to you. Mm. So mm. Uh, you used to have to go to the office to connect because that's where the files were. They had the internet or the server. And now that's all gone in the last five years. And we wonder why is anxiety on the rise? Well, actually, just as you were speaking, I was getting more and more anxious. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Anyway, this is research I'm doing for my next book, building on what I wrote and didn't see it coming. And uh, yeah, no wonder we're a little bit overwhelmed. And we have not yet developed the tools or the insight, I don't think, to figure out how to hit pause and to hit stop and even a filter to try to help us figure out, well, what part of this is helpful and what part of this is ruining your Mm -hmm. life? And again, if you're a digital native, you don't know any other existence. One of the benefits I have, and and I think you have at your stage of life, my stage of life, our stage, Ian, is we remember what it was like when this didn't Mm -hmm. exist. Mm -hmm. And right now that's a huge competitive advantage because it's easier for us to turn it off and go back to another way of living. Hey everybody, Typology Podcast is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can take classes in everything from photography and creative writing to design, productivity, and more. So whether you're returning to a longtime passion project, challenging yourself to get outside your comfort zone, or simply exploring something new, Skillshare has classes for you. So check this out. Right now, I'm actually taking a class on, listening, Productivity Today, Managing Attention in the Digital Age with a guy named Kevin Siskar. Think of it, managing attention in the digital age. Lord knows I can I can use that. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get two free months. That's right. Skillshare is offering Typology Podcast listeners two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash typology podcast again go to skillshare.com slash typology podcast to start your two free months now that's skillshare.com slash typology podcast and now back to our guest so that whole segment that we just did on anxiety i mean i hope sixes heard it Mm. enneagram sixes right who have a deep felt unconscious need for safety and security and who struggle against anxiety. I mean, anxiety is a major theme in the life of sixes. And so I do tell sixes all the time, stop watching 24 hour news. Oh yeah. Uh, Turn off your phones. Uh, You know, don't, don't be on every text. You know, can you imagine the, so, and also I would say that all of that anxiety and all of that pressure for every single type, what it will do when you're under stress, what happens? Your your um, personality, those aspects of your personality that are unhealthy will just amplify. You know, Absolutely. your defense system will just go into overdrive, mm. which creates more problems, right? I mean, no, you know what I've had to do because, I mean, I, I don't know, everybody's got unhealthy sides, but the unhealthy eight is not a fun person to be near and, and the next day, not a fun person to have been. It's like, really? I was like mm-hmm. that? Mm. And what I've found is on the other side of burnout, as my self-awareness has gone up, I have had to simply give myself a break. And sometimes at two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, I'm calling this a day Mm. because I know if I go into that meeting, I know what's going to happen and nobody is going to be grateful for it. So I'm going to go for a bike ride. You know what? I'm not going, I'm not doing that. And you shut down, you take care of yourself, mm-hmm. you have a reasonable night, you go to bed early, you get up the next day, it's a whole new day. Yep. Uh, but the unregulated me, that's where all the damage is done. It's done, <sighs> you know, it's why what, people yeah. never overeat at breakfast. Well, I guess you do, but you know, you're not like donuts everywhere. It's always at night because yep. you're tired and your willpower is broken down and your willpower is an exhaustible resource 
that actually diminishes over the day like a phone battery. Mm. So by the time you get to, you know, your four o'clock meeting and they're like, can we? And you're like, nope. Uh, all right. But you would have said yes at 10 a.m. You're just going to say no now. Right. So I'm, I'm paying way more attention to that, trying to stay healthy. I think that, by the way, is one of the greatest gifts that you have with the Enneagram is it's not like, oh, I'm an eight, look at me, or I'm a three. It's like, oh, healthy, unhealthy. That is mm-hmm. a gift. Mm-hmm. One of the things, Ian, that I've found so helpful is, you know, we did the, the free assessment for a while uh, with our team and at our annual retreat kind of went through it. and We had a lot of fun with that. But the IEQ9 is something I am running our entire team through right now, including mm. myself. You get a 40 page report and we're not done yet. Like it's literally in process as we record this. But I can't wait to do a much deeper dive into that because I think it helps us understand, respect, appreciate, and celebrate each other what we're learning. Uh, because mm. for whatever reason, this stuff lodges in people's memory. Yes. In a way that other yes, assessments just haven't. Yeah. Maybe they're capable of it, but they just haven't. I searched for a long time to find an Enneagram uh, assessment tool that I felt you know, I could feel confident recommending to friends and colleagues, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm, I think the IEQ nine is the, the, the best, most accurate, most, you know, scientifically ever evidence-based, um, assessment that is available on the market. So I'm very proud, uh, that the IEQ nine is, is out there and I can't wait to hear how it's, uh, affected your, uh, or impacted your team. Well, I'll let you know when you, when you uh, sent me the email and said, Hey, this is just out. You want to test it out? I was like, absolutely all day long. And then I emailed you back and I said, so it's an individual assessment. Can we do this for teams? You're like, hang on, I'm going to get back to you. So yeah, I I will keep you uh, posted in real time, but I know, you know, the stuff in the road back to you and the earlier assessment have been tremendously helpful. And I'm reminded, I don't know whether this was like, I think you said this in a Don Miller podcast. Uh, I heard you say it on some other show where uh, with some of your corporate consulting, you now have offices, you went into an office and like they have a nine on the door, or a six on the door, or mm-hmm. a three on the door. Yep. And that's just to remind people, oh, you're walking into the office of a performer or a challenger or, uh, you know, a perfectionist. And I think we're going to be that kind of company because we just, we, it actually shows up in our conversation week to week. Yeah. Well, I'm so, I'm thrilled to hear that. I I do believe, uh, and just circling back to what we said at the beginning, you know, other awareness begins with self-awareness, you know, uh, and the more you know yourself, the more likely it is, uh, and, and the easier it is to have empathy and understanding and compassion and insight into the, into the lives of others. Um, so back to this list from your book, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm thinking now about the whole um, topic of disconnection, which we were just mm, mentioning in loneliness. Yeah. And I think right away of fives. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm married to one. And that's where oh. my mind went. Yep. Yeah, that it is It is very hard for a five to relationally connect. You tell the story in your book of, you know, one of your best friends and you found out decades later has a brother that he just never happened to mention. That's right. <laughs> that is right. Like and you're like, thing. what? How did that get by me? Well, and and there, you talk about the compartmentalization, right? Yeah. Um, sort of segmenting groups in your life, none of whom are connected to each other, sort of pockets of relationships that are kept in isolation from one another. But fives definitely struggle with with a sense of disconnection, uh, and others around them suffer from wanting to know how to connect, but not knowing, well, geez, where do you plug in with this five? You know, it's like, how do I, how do I establish connection? Disconnection is a theme in the life of, of, uh, of self, dare I say, self-ignorant fives, right? Fives who don't yeah. know themselves yeah. well, who are not extending the effort to uh, remove the barriers to connection that, that they regularly, you know, put up. Well, and that's been a joy of being married to a five too. I should say for the record, I do I do believe I'm aware of all of my wife's siblings. So that's not a personal <laughs> reflection. To, unless she's really holding out on me after 28 years. I'm pretty sure. Wow. But that, that wow. one of the great joys of the last 10, 15 years is her name's Tony. You've met, you've met her, Ian. Uh, that watching her come out of her shell. Uh, that's a, that's mm. what we call it. And seeing her really, and you know, the weirdest thing is she has deep friendships that go back to 
literally first grade. Like people we see every year goes back to first grade. And so she's very capable of deep and lasting relationships. But, you know, when she meets new people, it's, it's work for her. And it's been wonderful to see her as she becomes more and more self-aware and healthy, uh, just to see her forging those relationships. And now she's calling me on it, which is good. Oh, man, that is so good. So good. I've got a great question for you when we come back. But first, let me tell you all about Restoring the Soul. Everybody, I want to talk to you about my friend Michael Cusick at RestoringTheSoul.com. Michael's a counselor in Denver, Colorado. He runs Restoring the Soul for the past 20 years. People have been going uh, to this remarkable program where you can spend one week to two week blocks in intensive counseling with Mike, half day blocks, let's say. This is where you get to do super deep work because oftentimes people can't get enough work done on a weekly 50 minute session, you know, during a, right? They really need an immersion. You know, it's almost like rehab, right? You you can't go to one meeting a week. Sometimes you got to start by having an intensive and this is an intensive. And I just, I cannot commend his work to people enough. He's particularly good around sexual addictions, uh, people with sexual addictions. Um, you need to go to restoringthesoul.com, check out Michael's work. You can even call him at 303-932-9777 and, and just get a free consultation. And as a special bonus for Typology listeners, they can go to www.restoringthesoul.com forward slash typology. And what you'll find is a, a PDF called Five Ways Unaddressed Trauma is Affecting Your Relationships. And that's a freebie for our uh, Typology listeners. So everyone uh, be sure to check that out. All right, let's get back to our guest. So let's finish up with pride. That was the last mm, one of the seven. Yeah. And of course, obviously for twos, it's an issue uh, because actually their their stated passion or deadly sin is pride, right? Right. Um, Which is so weird because the twos I know, I don't think of as proud people. Uh, I know. It's very, very subtle. And here's where it, here's how it appears. Twos secretly believe, sometimes subconsciously, sometimes unconsciously, that they're not as needy as other people are. <laughs> and the, where the pride sneaks in is the belief that they have the, all the time, energy, resources, talents uh, available to them to meet the needs of other people, right? And that's yeah. a lack of humility, right? Because right. nobody has all the time, energy, resources, talents to meet the needs of everybody, <laughs> right? Right. So for them, the humility piece that they have to grow into is realizing, hey, I don't have all that stuff. And, and so I can only help so many people. And also for twos, it's the, they need the humility to state their own needs, which is very hmm. hard for them. And that also is part of the pride piece, right? They have to um, overcome their pride so that they can actually tell other people, hey, you know what? I have personal needs too. Yeah. And, and, and not mask it behind this kind of, I don't have any needs, right? That's a, that's a prideful posture and they have to be careful of it. Wow. So this has been a rich conversation, huh? It's been a really rich conversation. I have learned an awful lot about uh, a book I wrote that I spent uh, over a year of my life <laughs> compiling. Now wait, I'm waiting for the second edition uh, to, for the publisher to give me a call so I'd include some Enneagram stuff in it. Oh my and, gosh, fantastic. Uh, this, is, this is fantastic. This is this is really, really good, Ian. And uh, I've, I've always, every time we talk, every time we connect, every time I access your material, I learn more about myself. So- Hopefully this helped a wide variety of leaders, not just eights. Man, I, I hope so. Let me remind people of your book, Didn't See It Coming. Um, I, boy, what an exciting topic. And I, again, I'm, I'm envious because I feel like, oh my gosh, I could have used that as the title of my book. Didn't see it coming. An <laughs> well, Enneagram... back to use not bad. You know, yeah, that's but a I, good one. think about it though. Didn't see it coming. An Enneagram guide to the unconscious. You know, it, it's like, you know, the more you That'll know preach. about yourself. I know, it'll, preach you. I know, man, for sure. Hey, everybody, you can learn more about what Carrie's doing at www.carrie. That's C-A-R-E-Y, Newhoff, N I. I E U W H O F dot com. Carrynewhoff.com. Millions of leaders uh, you know, access that site every year. You need to as well. Uh, you can go to him at Twitter at C Newhoff. 
uh, Facebook at C Newhoff and Instagram at Carrie Newhoff and be a part of, uh, of that world. Listen to his leadership podcast. You can get that wherever you download your, your podcasts and Carrie, it's always a joy, man. I, I'll tell you what I love about mm. you is you are an effusive, energetic uh, person who just, you know, you bring light into the room, energy and light when you when you come into the room. And it's, uh, I always, here's how, here's, here's what I would say. I always feel um, spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically enlarged and made better uh, as a result of our conversation. So I, I deeply appreciate it. I really appreciate you too. And I'm glad we've actually, I mean, we've had a couple of virtual meetings and some email back and forth, but it was fun. We were at a mutual friend's birthday party a couple of months ago and it was getting toward the end of the evening. And I looked over and I'm like, oh, that guy looks like Ian Cron. I'm like, well, actually that is Ian Cron. He would be at a party like this. And so we actually got to connect. And what I really appreciated, because sometimes you know how parties are a bit superficial. You chat a little bit and I'm a relator. That's my strength finder. So I'm going to mm-hmm. find the one guy I know best and just hang out with him for the whole night. That's me. Uh, but I was really impressed when we finally met face to face, how engaged you were. And uh, we had a great conversation. It was great to meet your yes. wife too. So, so very, very rich. And thank you for what you're doing. Thanks for what you're doing for, I know a lot of my listeners and uh, for the wider church, for our staff, for, for just hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Thank you. Well, my good friend, thank you. And to my Typology listeners, as always, thank you. And please remember the words of the great Oscar Wilde, be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. (laughs) Until next time. 